preaching today from our baptismal font for the baptism of our Lord. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Blessed Lord God, may the words of my mouth point only to your Son, Jesus Christ, whose thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to tie. May we make a humble offering today to him and his kingdom so that we may grow into the beloved community he promises. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I was baptized 54 years ago in a storefront Episcopal church in Fort Worth, Texas. Besides the gift of life, baptism is the best gift I have ever been given. The gift of life in Christ the life I share with you. Everything I cherish, everything I love, every bit of identity I have with Christ was wounded and challenged by the attempt to overthrow our government on Wednesday. My friends, we have been in Christ together in this place for almost 10 years now. I love you. And all I want to do is to be in Christ with you. And that means I need to be honest. I need to be real. I need to speak the truth as best I can. To be real today means to be heartbroken together, to be angry together, to be afraid together, to be upset and deeply, deeply disturbed together. I want to invite your feelings into this sacred place at this ongoing and exacerbated national crisis. And I want us to gather them all up into the love of Jesus. Yet even that normal pastoral wish adds more pain because we are forced to be apart. And we're forced to be apart by the same incompetent and malevolent administration that created this crisis. A crisis that is costing almost 4,000 Americans a day their lives. Let us add that to the outrage. Let us add that to the heartbreak. Let us add that to the astounded feeling that somehow a large segment of our country does not care. I am so angry. And I am so afraid. And I am so disgusted. An insurrectionist mob was assembled, funded, and egged on by the malignant narcissist who is our president and his enablers. They were assembled to overthrow and destroy government for the people and by the people. They were assembled to violently negate the will of the majority expressed in the election. They were planning to assassinate our elected leaders. 
they were planning to corrupt and destroy the peaceful transfer of power and the regular functioning of our republic. They recklessly let foreign agents into our capital, compromising national security. They recklessly endangered lives, causing four deaths and an additional death of Brian Sicknick, a Capitol Police officer. Our president hasn't even called that family or lowered the flag to half-mast on the White House. I am angry. The insurrectionist and seditious mob were made up of a cross-section of the most wicked and evil political actors in our nation. Rabid racists, anti-Semites, Nazis, members of the Klan, misogynists, persecutors of LGBTQ people, nationalists, nativists, QAnon fanatics, people who are mired deeply and doubling down on the worst history of our nation, representing an untold number of the like-minded, courted, coddled, and encouraged by the Republican Party, they can actually claim to be the base of that party today. This is not the politics of economic frustration. I'm going to repent of that theory that I have promoted. It is instead a reactionary, rearguard, white supremacy movement doing as much damage as possible on its way out. I cannot even believe this next thing I'm going to say. Many rioters wore t-shirts with the acronym 6MWNE. 6MWNE. That stands for six million was not enough. They're referring to six million Jews slaughtered by the Nazis in extermination camps in the Holocaust. This mob in endorses the Holocaust. They think that work needs to continue. They have an enthusiasm for Nazi death camps. Who can bear this evil? Who cannot see the wickedness and name it? Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger actually has called this our Kristallnacht. If you cannot see the moral evil here, if you cannot name the wickedness, then I think a moral inventory is in order. Because this mob was anti-gospel and anti-Christ. The opposite of Christ-like. The opposite of the gospel vision of beloved community. And we must recall as we gather around this baptismal font, where we joined Christ in his victory over all the forces of death, that those forces have been defeated. All of us who've been baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ, we have is our reassurance that the forces of evil and wickedness are defeated forces. They are withering on the vine. They are null, void, and nothing. So we can defeat them and participate in their end. In the face of the corruption on display this week, I need the water of baptism. I need the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ as my core, as my faith. I need to go down to the riverside. I need to renew my baptismal identity in Christ. I need to cleanse myself from the hateful stain of white supremacy that infects all white people in our nation. I need to find my life in the love of Jesus again. 
I need to receive the Holy Spirit who gives power to live in a community formed by Christ, in the character of Christ, living into the future of Christ, accountable to Christ. Love includes accountability. The Bible and our baptismal liturgy guide us, my friends. What do we do in this moment? First, we renounce and we repent. Then we put Christ, then we put on Christ and the Holy Spirit. It is far too early to speak of reconciliation, forgiveness, and the lie of unity. We must own our wrong and commit to what is right before relationships can be restored. This is about righting wrongs, not forgiveness, not reconciliation, not unity that papers over grave distrust, not yet. In our baptismal rite, we renounce all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God. We renounce the evil powers of this world that corrupt and destroy the creatures of God. And we renounce all sinful desires that draw us from the love of God. To renounce is to abandon, to leave behind the wicked way of life. And we must name what we are leaving behind especially after a terrible violation, like the events of this last week, we are charged with restoring healthy boundaries by naming and rejecting the evils that threaten our community. Restoring healthy boundaries means naming the violation and rejecting it from the realm of acceptable behavior and discourse. We name what we renounce, and why. We renounce Christian nationalism. Christian nationalism is heresy, and it is a sin. It is neither Christian, Christ is not in it, it is not Christ-like, and it is not even good stewardship of our nation. Christianity and white people have no privileged place in our polity. I'm going to say that again. Christianity and white people have no privileged place in our polity. God does not love Americans or white people more than other people. We renounce white nationalism, Christian nationalism, any nationalism that promotes competition between peoples and makes claims of superiority. We renounce anti-Semitism, and I cannot believe in 2021 I have to say this. Anti-Semitism is heresy and it is a sin. The destruction of anti-Semitism in the church is profound. In this neighborhood, it is profound. This neighborhood was founded on deeply anti-Semitic positions. We need to examine it, uncover it, and be done with it. Racism is heresy and a sin. We have worked so hard on this topic here. Yet, we have been immersed in the racist ugliness of the worst part of our American tradition by the events of this week. We cannot act surprised. We have never dealt with this as a nation, really and honestly and fully. This is outstanding business we must address because it is challenging our country to our very core. Racism is heresy and it is sin. Homophobia, same thing. We will not stand by and let LGBTQ people be attacked 
be demeaned, be diminished, be excluded. We will stand for them in their safety and the flourishing of their lives in every dimension. They are beloved by God, and love is love. We celebrate love, however expressed, between people. Nativism is sin. Nationalism is sin. They must be named and renounced, rooted out and repented. All of us who carry these evils must put the anti-gospel aside if we are to receive life in Christ without a horrible hypocrisy that will rot our souls and our relationships and threaten our community. These are sins. They're not up for discussion. I don't need to understand your racism. I don't need to listen to your racism. I don't need to listen to your homophobia. I need to call you out for it. I need to invite you to repent from it. The calling is repentance, my friends. And this is the baptism of repentance, and we follow it by baptism into the name of Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit as described in the Acts of the Apostles. It is not enough to leave the evil behind. We are invited to turn and embrace a new life, a new community, a new hope, a new way shaped by Christ, enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit. From this promised place, from this generative place, we live our baptismal vows, shaping our life and our communities to live in this new Christ-formed way so the world can see what is of Christ and what is not. If you cannot see what is of Christ and what is not, please use our renewal of baptismal vows today to check yourself, to do a moral inventory. It is not good enough to repent of racism. We must be actively anti-racist restoring right relationship. It is not good enough to repent of anti-Semitism. We must be actively making relationships with our Jewish neighbors and defending them from defamation, hatred, and threats of all kinds. It's not enough to repent from homophobia. We must be actively defeating all laws that persecute and oppress gay, lesbian, and transgender people, and doing our work to make sure they feel at home in this church, in this neighborhood, and that they are safe in our city. My friends, we must devote our lives and our highest skill and ability to the gospel vision of righteousness and believe that it will overcome the hideous stain of evil that haunts humanity because this is how we live out our restoration to God in Jesus Christ. When we do a controlled burn in a meadow or a forest, we light two fires. We light the fire on one side that is to burn up whatever invasive needs to go. And on the other side, we do a control that burns the other way and stops the fire in its tracks. The life of the baptized community is that counter fire that stops the raging madness in its tracks by taking away its fuel, by calling out its falsehoods and lies by depriving it of room to breathe. We must be the counter fire empowered by the Holy Spirit that stops the madness, that stops this resurgent, sinful, heretical, 
hateful, maniacal, malevolent movement that is surging up from the soul of our unhealed nation. Let us be empowered by the Holy Spirit to push back these forces from whence they came and thus participate in the victory of Christ given in baptism. Amen.